I'm Emma Oxley, and I know I'm going to get splattered. I'm Nick Holt, and I squeeze spots. And I'm John Eccleston, and I've got exploding knees. I'm Brill, and this is going to be <laughs> disgusting. So I'm off out of it. I'm John Eccleston's grandfather. And this week's Brill is about creating the illusion of blood and gore and horror. Or as the makers of these films say, it's the splatter that matters. So let's meet accomplished filmmaker and splatstick specialist, Edgar Wright. Edgar, I suppose the main question is, what exactly is splatter? Um, well, splatter is a term for all manner of uh, gory effects, you know, films, theatre, fancy dress, practical jokes, whatever. Um, we don't tend to sort of splash out much on effects on my films, so uh, we just head down for the supermarket for the cheap and nasty. So let's sweep that supermarket. The purpose of this exercise, the word sick, or vomit, will be replaced by the word chewy. Edgar, what's the recipe for uh, chewy? When you're making um, sick or chewy, chewy. whatever you like, um, uh, you need a good base, first of all. Yeah. And um, a good starter is, of course, porridge, everybody's favourite. Right. So get a bit of porridge in there, and uh, of course, then you've got to get the milk. Yeah. So, you know, nice and substantial, and they're quite thick, and... Um, Give it a good stir, as you do. And that's just ordinary milk, is it? That's just ordinary full cream, semi skim whatever you takes your fancy. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're going to be putting it in your mouth, you've got to think about, um, you know, taste. Okay, so then we've got the um, the good. This is the the vom base or Huey. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, next we need a little bit of food colouring just to make it a tiny bit sort of um, disgusting and surreal, probably. Is that orange or yellow? It's um, it's melon apparently. Melon. Ah, <laughs> yes, that well known like. colour. <laughs> of course, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, stick it on the walls. Uh, stick it on the pavement on the way home. Anything else you're going to add tonight? Well, yes. I mean, apart from the um, base, you need the obligatory um, vegetables. So, um, of course, there's the ubiquitous diced carrots. <laughs> going there. Which... Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't matter when you're sick or when you last had carrots. There's always bits of carrots. And tomato peel. I think it's, it, there's a special carrot gland which comes into action whenever you do, um, Huey. Is there? Yeah. So there we go like that. And if you're feeling particularly sort of extravagant, it's a bit peas in. Peas in there. I'm just stuck in one. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Waste not, what is, not. Um, <laughs> so this is, I mean, um, that's quite a nice sort of, um, nice colourful blend there. You know, it is, um, isn't it? Looks good on camera. Yeah. And uh, there you go. It's um, ready for all occasions. Let's just regurgitate those ingredients once more. Porridge oats, milk, food colouring, tinned carrots, tinned peas, and a strong stomach. In America, there's a shop that specialises entirely in movie blood and gore for every occasion. Yes, about there. In fact, the most fake blood ever used in a movie was on the horror film Brain Dead. They used a gushing 39,000 litres. The gore, the merrier, I say. It's funny how the nicest things can become really disgusting depending on their location. On toast, it's nice, yummy chocolate spread. On your shoe, it's something your mother wouldn't want you to tread into the carpet. 
And might I suggest that if you're going to try this one at home, put it on the top of the shoe and not the underneath, otherwise you'll get me into trouble. And of course, there's the old classic <laughs> fake doo doo. Uh, we, we haven't got any fake doo doo, John. I'm always terribly impressed in the movies when they do these big fight sequences, you know, where you, you see Bruce Willis get a, a gob full of fish and then he gets up and lives on to fight for another day. So, Edgar, how, how do you do that, then? How, how, do, how do you do the fights, then? Den? Well, it's dead simple. I mean, whoever's watching, audience, uh, people at home, the yeah. camera, you've got to place your subject so that the, um, they can't see that you're, in fact, missing the face completely. Right. So if I swing the punch to them, it looks like um, I'm actually hitting you straight in the gob. Right. What we do next is um, to make it look a bit more uh, realistic is you've got to ride back with my fake punch. Right. So if I go, oh, back. That's a good idea. Well, yeah, and then to complete the effect is to make the noise of a punch yourself, which is quite easy, is what I do is just um, hit the chest at the same time as the punch. So oh, if I easy. go, oh, oh, how was that? How was that for you, viewers? <laughs> it's good for me. <laughs> right. So, so what else can we do? What you can also do is get some um, mints, which yeah. um, if you crack up in your mouth during the lead-up to the fight, you can then spit out a, a, a good moment and uh, thereby create the highly realistic effect of cracked teeth. So if you spit them out when you wish, and mm -hmm. you can also, to fully finish off your uh, Jake Lamar impression, get some uh, blood capsules from the local jerk shop. And um, these you can also secrete <laughs> um, and then spit out when you wish to um, add a bit of blood to the proceedings. Welcome to Madison Square Gardens, living room. And welcome to the fake fight of the century. In the great corner, we have John Raging Fish Eggleston. And in the other great corner, we have Ed the Gore Wright. What a nasty blow. Oh, and doesn't Emma look lovely in that pot? Thank you, Emma. And they're off. No, it's just the towels that are off. Oh, there's some tremendous posing here today. And here they go. It's a right, it's a left, it's a right, it's a left, it's a right. And now they're circling each other like vultures. Oh, that punch was nowhere near. Let's see that in slow motion. Yes, that fake punch is completely unbelievable and that's what makes it fake. Back to the fight. Oh, and the gore is faking one heck of a whopping. And here comes the big one. Oh, he's still on his feet. John's got him in an arm lock, but it's a fake hand. There's a fake punch. There's the fake teeth. What an unconvincing fight. There'll be letters about this, and I shall be the one writing them. 